So let's do the fun introductory part. Uh, so yes, welcome along to uh, another uh, question corner with, of course, your hosts. We are here. We are uh, uh, Niall Neela, developer advocates at Commanda. And uh, yeah, the, the, I think this is the last one of the year, is it? Or we do one next, next month? I think this is the last question corner of the year, is it? No, we do one in December. I think the last one will be in December. So oh. one more to go. Yes, I think there's one more to go. I uh, think so. so. <laughs> yeah, we'll make it happen if not. Uh, so yes, welcome along. And uh, this is our usual look that we give whenever we're answering questions in the question corner. So if you're ever the camera's not on us, this is how we are usually acting. So um, yeah, last one is 8th of December. Thank you very, very much for that information. So uh, as usual, we take all of our lovely questions from Slido. And the Slido has been open for uh, a couple of weeks now. So we've already got a bunch of questions. Um, so you can scan that QR code or you can go to slido.com and you can uh, go to and type in QC23. And then you will be sending us and uh, questions. Now, how do you send those questions? Very, very easy. You type them right here where they ask you to type the question. And if in fact your question or something like it has already been asked, well, have no fear. There's a up button there, which you can click to upvote your questions. Uh, and then once you do, we shall consider answering them. Now, more importantly, this is the reason why, uh, this is an important thing for all of you lovely people who have showed up in person. Uh, your questions, the questions of the people who have arrived at this very wonderful live event are the most important to us. Since you're taking time out of your day to watch us talk about things, we should at the very least uh, and prioritize your questions. So as new questions come in during the event, we will uh, try to get to those first. Um, so yeah, that is the uh, plan. I think that's us going to now move straight to the questions. So let's do that. Um, so one of the questions that came in earlier, uh, which uh, earlier in the week, which is how to use event exporters uh, in self management one A, can you show usage or implementation example? So this is a great question, one which I actually checked uh, out a little bit before the event to see if I can get a good answer for you. And I'm going to explain this question uh, by first explaining what exporters are for those who may not know. So let me think, where is the export things? Oh, the screen, sorry, is very irritating. Let's see. Uh, so if I go to Commanda 8 exporters, uh, we'll be landed in the docs page. Great. And right here, uh, it'll explain to you what exporters are. Now, exporters are super, super handy for C8 because, uh, oh, my audio quality is not good. Oh, well, thank you for that. Let me see. I do have another mic, but it's not very good either. Now, uh, let's see what I can do. Neela, do I send words? Yes, uh, sound okay-ish, but yeah, maybe you could improve. Well, thank you. And is this one? Oh, this way one? better, way better. This is better? Okay, there way we go. Better. I would like to thank Tobias for the heads up there that I should be using a different mic. Uh, appreciate it greatly. Um, anyway, as I was saying, exporters. So exporters are um, uh, a place where the events of everything that happens inside ZB can be packed captured and put somewhere for other use. You'll see in the documentation that they explain some ways of doing it, things like putting it in a data warehouse. But a more common way to do it would be to, to visualize the records in some tool. Now, the question itself asked about how uh, to use these exporters in a self-managed Commanda H to, um, and how the implementation is. Now, luckily, there's a little link right here to this lovely thing, the ZB sim uh, uh, simple monitor. And this actually utilizes the, um, the exporter uh, mechanism to create something that can allow you to do stuff like this. It can allow you to see um, your model, to create instances, basically all the things you can do and validate things that are going on in your model. And so this is a pretty good code example. It's free and open source. So you can check out exactly how this is implemented and that should hopefully um, be mm. able to do that. Neil, do you have additional information for me? No, maybe you can add because like those exporters or this exporter goes to Elasticsearch, I think, and Simple Monitor uses their like the data to have a front end representation of what's going on in your um, process engine. But they are also, I think, community exporters to Kafka and to Hazelcast. So maybe sometimes you don't want to build a front end to display what's going on in the process. Maybe sometimes you want to have Kafka topics aligned to what's going on in the process engine. And I think, I'm not sure, I haven't checked it out myself, but I think they are community um, 
written. So they are, should be open source and there should be also some examples around. I think so too. I'll try to have a look for them. Uh, Neil is right. I'll try maybe see if I can find those examples. And, but and maybe also yeah. interesting to mention because um, it, as, uh, as, um, as ah, my English, well, it asks for Camunda self-managed. Maybe one way we can say here, it's not possible to use those exporters if you use Camunda cloud. So in cloud will be not possible. Uh, correct. Uh when I mean when I say correct, I mean the question. I'm going to take the the correct the correct the, the the question is answered uh, correctly. <laughs> Go team us. Uh, do you have a question you would like to look into next? There's a whole bunch of them here. Do you have anything that you like? Oh, well, we can go for one uh, connector question. I see some here. Um, there is the latest one asked: Can I disable certain connectors in Camunda Eight if I don't? need them and don't want to confuse people modeling processes with it. Okay, so there are more, more, more answers to that. So in Camunda Cloud, there is no way at the moment to disable them in that model. So you have to live with what we put in, in there. Um, in Camunda Self-Managed, you have this, the whole control because you basically decide which of the connectors you want to um, use, which ones you like to run. You also have to run them yourselves, but there you have the full control of which connectors you need and which which also you would like to display to people uh, modeling processes. Yeah, that's a very good point. Funnily enough, I don't think I've had anyone ask this question. And as soon as it was asked, I thought that makes a lot of sense uh, because you would want to remove these kinds of things. Um, I think that's worth bringing up, I think, to some people to see if this is a feature that we may actually allow, because it would make sense for, for us to be able to offer like if the, at least permissions or something to be able to use connectors when modeling. So yeah, thanks for that. Um, and if someone, the person who did this question has a specific use case in mind, put it in the chat or create a new question with it so I can get more information about um, why it is we might want this feature. So yeah, appreciate it. Uh, let's do it. Uh, next up, I will take this incredibly easy one, um, <laughs> since will token move be available in Commander 8? Great question. And the answer is it already is as of like a week ago or something. Um, so Commander 8.1 released about a week ago, and now you can move tokens uh, from one place to another or cancel them or create them or whatever, um, similar to C7. Um, now, this is for those of you in the community who may remember the um, uh, Commando back when we had uh, Commando 7 back when this didn't exist, this is usually the first step towards being able to do uh, migration because first you need the ability to start to um, start a process from anywhere, which we did before. Then you need the ability to move tokens around, which we now have. So we, we expect the next iteration will be uh, migration from one process definition to another or to another version, that sort of thing will probably be coming next now that we have those two bricks in place. So yeah, that's another really big feature, I think, coming uh, to, to see it, yeah. Are you brave enough for a live demo now? Not prepared, but... <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Perfect. Yeah. Thanks, Naila, for throwing me into that. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, I'm sure it'll... Oh, great. You, you could have said no. You could have said no, not, not today. <laughs> when when would I when, when would I deny a challenge like that, Naila? Uh, I'm, I'm far too brave for that. Um, I'm going to stop sharing just while I click things together. Um, okay. So I'm going to try... I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm just quickly looking for... Um, for the feature, no, oh, no, kidding. for for it is. <laughs> Thanks very much. Okay, let me show you. Uh, cool. Okay, so here is. Uh, I was testing some error handling oh. earlier, so this may look insane, but it's not so bad. Um, let's see my processes. Let's find. There's one I was messing around with that actually might be okay. Um. Uh, let's pick any of them. Really, book check maybe. Let's see if that one looks. Okay, uh, so here we have a uh, book check. There's an instance there, and we can go into, it has an, an, a problem with it, obviously. Uh, we can just go in here to this little uh, thing, and we can say, add a token here. Great. We can remove a token here, and maybe add one over here. Why not? And then we just simply apply the modifications. Uh, we get all of the feedback here, apply it. 
And in a couple of seconds, then it then throws that information to uh, ZB, which then moves all the tokens around. And then what should happen is we should get a response, which as you can see, a minus one token here and the two tokens are, are alive and well. And the error of course is gone. So thank you for putting me in the spot there, Neela. Uh, but it didn't work. I didn't fail to show a very basic feature of C8. <laughs> it did work, quite cool. And well, it, you don't get this message anymore. You're playing with fire. So I guess you were yeah, like, yeah. Actually, we should say it. We should have a voice or something that says you were playing with fire with this particular yeah. feature because that is very, very true. Um, so Because yeah, now so. you have somehow two tokens and before you just like, from the model perspective, that would never have been possible. But yeah, I mean, that's a different. I do like your completionism. And for that reason, I'm going to go back and remove one just to make you happy, Nayla. <laughs> Thank there you. Because I like you. you're a completionist. There we go. OK, Thanks. the feature works. Cool. So I hope that answers the question. Uh, Nayla, is there a question you want to take? Sure. I saw an, Oh, yeah, there is another. Will developers be required to use connectors in the future for Commander 8? Uh, no, <laughs> it's, a, it's a quick answer. It's a help for you, or it should be a help for organizations that also want to go in a direction where they might have a bunch of people or a group of people that are not, uh, not developers, and they need to implement business processes. And with connectors, you give them the help because the developers can either build own connectors and then use the feature of element templates for low code, um, for the group of low coders who basically need to fill in the information in the property panel. But if you don't have that group in your company, you don't have to use connectors. You can just use um, the concept of job uh, workers and continue coding um, the job workers or um, external tasks as you used to. So we don't force you to use connectors if you don't want to. Exactly. Yeah. No, uh, I think connectors have their place, but I think um, they're not going, they're, they're, they're in no position to be replacing um, the job worker stuff. Um, just as a reminder to, if you have any questions, throw them in there and we will answer them for you. We still have a bunch left, but uh, just to let you know to um, that your questions are always prioritized. If you think of anything at all, just let us know. Um, so thanks for that one. I'm going to take that one there. Um, another Another great one, which I will again take on, will the org gateway be supported in C8 and in the token simulator? Okay, so let's do a, let's, let's demo this um, again, because why not? Let's see, where's my, my modeler? So- Oh, it's those a little, are, yeah. <laughs> yeah, go on, Nila. I think when the front end changed, I found it always confusing to find the modeler, but you just did, so. Thank you. No, I appreciate the uh, the help there. Uh, so the token simulator, for those who may not have, who may not know, is the coolest thing we've ever made at Commander, as in my opinion, because I love this token simulator. So it will show the way things work with different symbols, and it can do a whole bunch of very complex things. Uh, like, for instance, we can have a error boundary event here or something that goes there and then I don't know, it goes back over here, something random like that. And then this is really nice when you're getting to know or you're helping to teach somebody how um, this stuff works. So like how do error boundary events work? Well, I'll show you. I'm going to turn on token simulation and I'm going to say, we send a token, it goes to the XOR gateway, then the potential is the error might get fired and then it goes here. And the nice thing about token simulator is you can also demonstrate like other types of symbols like um, let's say timers, for instance, um, which I shall drop here, non-interrupting ones, for instance. And this can really, really be very useful before you're, if you're very uh, new to BPMN, you can understand, oh, you can have loads of timers fire, but if one error fires, that's it, the task ends, that sort of thing. So these are really nice concepts that are actually quite hard to have people understand in um, when you're explaining how they work, but when you visualize them, super handy. So they're great. Now, you can see the first thing is that every symbol here that I can develop uh, is for ZB, let's do 1.0. Great stuff. So now everything is going to be for uh, available for ZB 1.0. That's the, that's the, um, what they were checking against. And as you can see, only symbols that we can add to, to ZB 8.0 will, will be available. So if I, for instance, select this, you can now see we have an inclusive gateway. Hurrah, because it already exists um, as part of 1.8.1. 
but it is not supported yet as part of the token simulator, which is why that question exists. Um, this is actually something that we are um, for sure going to probably implement soon because we see token simulation as a really important part of the engine. So I would expect it. There definitely exists a task on somebody's board at this very moment that says implement the OR gateway for uh, token simulator. So um, I just don't know when that will happen is the only question. So yeah, it's supported now. Oh, I should also mention that it, yeah, before you were to say this yourself, Neil, it's not completely supported. Um, this was a community contribution, this or the org gateway, which is great, but it's two, it, the tickets are split in half between the um, the one that uh, um, splits and the one that merges. So the one that splits is working, the one that mer that's merging is a different ticket that'll be on the way shortly, uh, I would hope. Anything else, Naila, that you think need to be dropped in here? No, I just wanted to say that actually, because I found it super cool that we had this as a community contribution. And I think there might be more symbols coming from the community, but I know now that you are involved in this project, aren't you? Like, I well, sure am. You don't build them, but you know which, which symbols will be taken by the community. Can you give us um, some insights? What will be next or what, what do you think could be next? Yes, I can. You'll be delighted to know, uh, everyone who uses Commando will be delighted to know that indeed I will not be contributing any code that I've written myself to the engine. Um, uh, but uh, you're right. So what we're trying to do is there's a whole bunch of symbols that are quite low priority for us, that are, but also are very low complexity to build. And we're trying to um, make sure that we make it very easy for people who are interested in those symbols to, uh, and want to contribute to Commanda to be able to do that. Uh, right now, the undefined task is one. The link event is another. A uh, signal is being done by a community member and also data objects. So a lot of these aren't possible to model yet in Commanda 8, but they're on the way. So um, thanks to the community. So yeah, that's uh, a thing to look forward to. Um, they're, they all have tickets associated with them um, and they also have a dedicated um, uh, developer on the ZB team that can actually help and step you, step you through writing it. So it's a, it's, it's a process that I would hope anyone who is interested in contributing will enjoy. Um, yeah. So Neela, what you got for yourself? Mm, let's see. Um... Oh, there is one that I see uh, coming in Camunda 8. There is a feature to define a time to live for a message. Will that become available for Camunda 7 too? Ah, there we go. At this one. Um, so the feature is quite cool. So if you know Camunda, you have the message event. And the idea is that you have or can send messages to the engine and then you correlate them based on some values or some variables. And um, in Camunda 7, we implemented quite strictly the BPMN standard, which says, if you don't have a token waiting for a message and a message arrives, you lose the message. And that can be sometimes a little bit, um, yeah, uh, irritating because maybe your token arrives like a millisecond later to the point where it would receive the message. And in Camunda 8, actually, we have that feature now. If you send a message to the Camunda engine, you can define a time to live. Um, with a flag you can set and for example you can say this message uh, should sit there for an hour and um, if it's not picked up after an hour you delete this message again but it's quite handy because you don't lose the messages anymore um, I think so far we are not planning to implement it in Camunda 7 um, now you can correct me if I'm wrong but I think this for now stays something that we support in Camunda 8 yeah, you're exactly. You're exactly yeah. right. No, you're exactly right. Yeah. No, there is. I was the reason I was thinking is there is a community extension that um, intercepts the messages and gives them a time to live. I think using Spring eventing or something. I can't remember the exact implementation, but it is possible to implement it with C7, but it just doesn't come out of the box, um, as far as I know. Um, if anyone in the chat knows exactly what I'm talking about and the project I'm talking about, uh, if I didn't dream it, which has happened in the past, uh, let me know. Okay. Um, ticky, ticky. Okay. Um, let's go with this lovely one here, top one of the list. What, why, what, what way? Are there, yeah, sorry. Okay, let's try and read a sentence again now. <laughs> what way does Commander suggest building a front end with C8? Should we use form builder and task list? Uh, here's my first opportunity to say it depends because it does. Now, the reality is that the, um, the form builder right now is still a bunch of features away from being 
the kind of thing that I think is robust enough for like any generic use case to be able to say, yes, for sure, use the form builder. Internally in Kamunda, we actually uh, have recently dedicated a bunch of resources for human task management in particular. So we actually do see this becoming a much bigger uh, topic internally. So you, you'll see a lot more features there. Um, but right now, you can probably try to use the form builder to do as much as you can. Um, and then if you, I would say it's a good first iteration if you're just using for simple automation and stuff. The reality is that we do have a quite wonderful um, uh, API that we can use, our uh, GraphQL. Hey, Neil, do you know where the, didn't, Jonathan actually did an example of that a while ago, right? It's on GitHub somewhere. It's in the consultant. Yes, thing. yes, he did. Can you, can you yeah, go I, for, we I, look I, for that? I can look for the link if you if you keep talking because I'm not multitasking. No problem. Talking is the one thing that I'm actually pretty good at doing without any help from anyone else. So we do have an example of this that uh, um, uh, Jonathan Consulting uh, built, where he used the GraphQL to build an external task list for C7, sorry, C8, so that you can actually get tasks, complete them, visualize them, assign them, all the things you can do, but also be able to embed like fancier forms and things like that. Um, so it's it's a nice little example. And if you wanted to build uh, a bespoke form from scratch, it would probably be a good uh, or like front end using Kamunda from scratch is a nice idea. So I would suggest uh, doing that. And I've talked for exactly enough time it took for uh, Naila to find the link and post it into the uh, the chat. So thanks very much for that, Naila. Okay. You're welcome. Ticky ticky. We got three more left. What you got, okay. Naila? Um, oh, well, there are three. Um, which one do I like to take? Um, maybe um what can i do if my process model gets too complex and complicated i like that question quite a lot because um everybody has a different understanding probably what complex and complicated means but um one thing is if it looks really complex and complicated look if you really um looked at the best practices of modeling. Sometimes it can be an indicator that the overview is not that nice anymore because you might not have modeled from the left to the right or you use lanes or things like that, that sometimes makes the model more complex and you lose the overview. If you still think your model is too big and you want to scope it a little bit better, you could, uh, you could use, for example, also call activities to make it smaller, to digest the model in uh, different pieces. That would be another option. But normally, I think BPMN is a language that is able to express so many things. So sometimes it's also good if your model becomes a little bit more complicated and you don't just have like a straight working flow. Um, so yeah, but to make it still understandable for people, it's really it's really a good idea to look into the modeling best practices so that you make sure that the model can be read by a lot of people. Yeah, I agree. There's also the idea um, of looking through it for like commonly repeating patterns. And, and mm -hmm. as Naila said, you could abstract those into a collectivity or this is something that I would suggest because I love event sub processes, but think about from uh, abstracting parts of the model out into standalone event sub processes that are triggered by events that might might may occur. That's a nice way of removing uh, particular um, events and things. And uh, yeah, there's yeah, Neil made a very good point in saying uh, complex and uh, complicated. Um, that could mean to read. It could mean in terms of the execution. Uh, there's a lot of uh, leeway there, but there's usually a lot of really very simple ways of using BPMN to do that. One oh, of them, yeah. Maybe one thing that came into my mind, if it gets too complex, also ask is you, are you like, maybe your tasks are too narrow. Maybe you could combine some stuff in, in mm. one task. Maybe you have it too detailed in the, in the tasks or um, that could be sometimes a reason. Like maybe you could combine also something into one service task sometimes that could make sense. Well, sorry, yeah. I interrupted you now. No, you're right. oh, exactly I right. wanted to say it was just something that came up. Always so. feel free to interrupt me, Nela. There's no need, no problem at all. Otherwise, I wouldn't right. stop talking. There's, there's no breaks. <laughs> so yeah, uh, okay. I was actually, I was also going to suggest um, using more complex symbols. So for instance, people sometimes um, make models based on the symbols they know and love. So that will be parallel gateways, XOR gateways, and then maybe the odd timer and things, but they don't look beyond that. For instance, compensation is a very simple way of doing something very complicated or 
um, you know, signal events to trigger stuff or even link events can end up actually really helping uh, make your process easier to read and look less complicated. So look at the other other symbols in BPMN and see if you can actually um, use those to reduce the complexity to those symbols. Alrighty, um, Anders has asked a question, so I'm going to go straight to that one. And this is a great question to answer because I have a good answer for it. So adding tasks in Commando Modeler requires a task type. I know we're very strict about that. Is it possible to turn that error off in other design phases? So let's open up the modeler and, and let's show exactly what you're talking about. So I'm going to just... Um, maybe, that, this. Yeah, maybe the question came because you start modeling and I think I saw the error already. Like you yeah, started, true. yeah, 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 I saw... I saw it already as a problem. So there it is. So you can see problems just ticks up to one whenever we do that, right? So this is actually, this is the funny thing is this is a, there is a task name for this empty box. Naila, what is it? Undefined task. <laughs> yeah, I thought if I catch you out. So yeah, so this is actually an undefined task. And and I know it makes it, it's a bit crazy to say this, but it's not implemented in the engine. This does have specific semantics that's supposed to happen. And those semantics are really simple. Those semantics are same as the um, intermediate event, which is just, it goes through it. So they should say, do nothing. It's it's and like the manual task, right? So basically the manual task is the same. Do we have them? Yeah. So as you can see, we have no problems now because manual task, I guess, is implemented. So this is a good alternative. Is it implemented? Probably, right? Uh, well, it just goes through, yeah. Yeah. So this is a good alternative. Um, that said, uh, I mentioned already earlier that we're actually, uh, uh, we've added this as a, a, a we actually do want to implement the, the undefined task and it wouldn't be too hard. Um, and I think it's possible that somebody met, someone from the community may already be working on it right now. So we could have that. In the meantime, for prototyping, using the um, manual task will just mean that it'll go right through it. wonder if we can use output. Can we, can we add output for this? I don't think Extension so. Extension properties? No, shame. Because I think that would be really handy if you wanted to mock variables and things. Oh. Because um, I was thinking, as you can do it for the for these events here, you can create variables uh, that can then go forward and do a thing like on a gateway. Anyway, that's that's slightly in the weeds. Uh, but yeah, so this is our best bet. The Also, the errors are, are more subtle now. So it says problems, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have a big red thing anymore unless you actually expand this and then it'll start showing the error message. So the, the error messages are less subtle now, sorry, are more subtle now than they were. So hopefully that'll help in some way. Oh, do you still get an error message if you um, haven't defined the job type? Just just wondering. Just yeah, try for it out. sure. Yeah, you yeah, still get that, cool. right? So if you have not defined... And look, you go yeah. straight to the job type, and they're really cool. Yeah. So yeah, that that does exist. That's, yeah. That, yeah. But this a user task or a manual task doesn't require any additional implementation requirements. So you can use those instead. Um, yeah. Or just ignore them if you know you're just prototyping and try not to look at the problem section. Like sometimes. Yeah. Let's see how many problems we have. We have two problems. Oof. Sad times. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So hope that answered your question. So it, it is coming soon, I guess. But until then, you can close your eyes and hope the problems go away. Um, cool. Thank you. We are we are doing really well because we're at the 30 minute mark and uh, we've only got another 15 maximum. So let's um, move on to this. Naila, do you have a favorite of those two? I like both, basically. Um, maybe I take the the last one. Are there more ways to run Kamunda 8 self-managed -man uh, uh, other than Kubernetes? Um, and I think in our documentation, we recommend running them on Kubernetes, but I know there might be some different setups possible as well. So there might be, or you could try to run Kamunda self, uh, 8 self-managed with Nomad, which is um, like Kubernetes, um, or you could also use uh, Docker Swarm for it. I think that are the ways um, that would be the most stable way to run it. You should probably um, not run it basically as a Docker image that is not recommended, um, but yeah. And if you, I mean, that would be for production, right? So that would be the ways how you would do it in production. If you want to test Kamunda 8 self-managed on your machine, there is a Docker image. You could use that. It takes some resources. What you could do um, other than that is you can install Kind on your machine that will create Kubernetes clusters for you. And then you can also um, run Kamunda 8 self-managed in there. I tried that out with, uh, with Kind and I, I really liked that. I think that was an easy way to, to start up Kamunda 8 self-managed. 
Nile, do you, how do you start normally up? Come on, it's up. Yeah, I was hoping you wouldn't ask me that question because yeah. I know that you've done a lot more on this than I have. So uh, everything you were saying just there, I was thinking, I better, I better learn this. It sounds very important. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, I'm not a Kubernetes expert, so I'm still, I'm always happy if it just runs on kind and if like it goes up, but yeah, I think it's quite easy. So it's not, it's not magic happening there. So um, it's really, it was, was really easy to, to install kind and use it with kind together. Nice. That's good, great advice. Thank you very much, Nila. Uh, the final question, we can both talk about this, Nila, because the word that sticks out to me here is easiest. <laughs> and I think that is very dependent. And um, so what is the easiest way to combine Commanda with a message broker? Um, there's a lot of questions that you would need to ask first. Um, the first is, why are you using, why do you need a message broker? Like what's the uh, use case? Because there's loads of reasons, very good reasons why you might want to use it. Is it to replace the uh, message event that beef menus? Probably not. Is it to connect a bunch of other systems that already communicate through a broker like Kafka or RabbitMQ or something? In which case, yeah. Um, Neela, which is your favorite message broker and which one would you uh, like to integrate or like to integrate the easiest? I think I don't have a favorite. I just know, like I have just played around with two. I know Kafka and RabbitMQ and I, I think both are great. Um, I think Kafka has um, maybe some more features or maybe I discovered some more features. I think we have good examples how to combine Kamunda 7 and Kamunda 8 with Kafka. So that might be a an easy start for you because you have those resources available. If you use another message broker, you might research a little bit more. Um, maybe that makes it a little bit harder. I I also don't know what easy means, and but also it depends, as you said, now what what is the use case? Why are you using this message broker? What is this message broker doing, and how does it influence my process in the end? So, yeah. I, I agree. I'm actually going to throw in a really dumb idea, which I think is is fun to mention, which is um, at the hack days, uh, at the hackathon this year before Comundicon, Jan Galinsky built a connector to Camel. And mm -hmm. Camel is super handy for connecting Comunda now to basically anything because you can just use Camel Roots. So you can use your own favorite message broker and then use camel as a way of being able to uh send and receive um those messages from like i don't know you could just send them directly to camel or maybe you can connect camel to rabbitmq or something um in the end the depending on what you're trying to trigger within Commander, it could just mean you are sending an event or it could mean that you're completing a task or whatever or starting a process so we have api for that so um you can always like try and just have the easiest way being just have your message broker somehow trigger the api directly um but yeah it's a it's a big question about exactly what you need to do with the message broker and but, how you define easiest but i guess it's not a too stupid question because um I, th I think we see a lot of use cases where we see both, like we don't, we see a message broker and Kamuna together in architectures. I think um, that might be, sometimes people think it's either or because we talk about orchestration or choreography, but often we have the case where both are used together, um, but for different use cases. And that's like then interesting to understand what is the use case and why do we need both? So, but I think it's a, yeah, it's a good way in a microservice architecture to have both. Yeah, I, I completely agree. We see it very, very frequently. So yes, uh, thank you. I should also mention that um, Commander, we were talking about Commander 8, or Commander 7, I think there's a million different ways of doing it. Uh, there's a lot of community extensions and things, and you can go and switch for your own. Neil, we did it. We completed the questions. Aren't we the best? Mm -hmm. uh, let's return briefly to the slide deck. I signed out for some reason. That's not good. I'm back. Okay. Ah, ah. Stop sharing while it does this thing. Sorry for screaming as my computer decides to um, sign me out of what I was doing. Uh, Neela, do you want to talk for a few seconds while I fix my machine? Of course, I can try to talk as you talk, but maybe I'm not so successful in this. But yeah, so I hope you enjoyed the question corner. As Nile said, we will have one last version this year that will be in December, not the last uh, last. Thursday in December, we do it probably earlier. I think the date was published already. I think Niall is back. So Niall, you can talk about what it, you want to say now. I did great. The date was the 8th, I think, I remember seeing from uh, Kaya Point uh, Post, I assume. 
Uh, yes. So, uh, hey, there's some stuff you should know about. For instance, if you're using Commanda and you like to complain about the stuff you see or compliment us about the things we're doing, in a, uh, you can actually um, take part in a user experience um, uh, research. So that just means that we'll have a wee chat with you, maybe do a survey with you and find out the ways you're using um, Commanda 8 and how you are enjoying it and also help us make a better a uh, thing you can also add uh, Liv's email address is right down there, and you can send her and bug her an email as well if you like. Um, also, we still do every month the developer newsletter. This is kind of cool. This is um, probably going to get even more and more interesting over the coming months when we start to get more people contributing things like new connectors, new exporters, as uh, Commando 8 gets used more frequently. So um, yeah, this is designed to just show you the latest things that we're producing, uh, uh, both by the community and by ourselves, and uh, as well as that some information about some features that we have coming up, alpha releases, and all the rest of the things that you will uh, you will enjoy. Uh, it says subscribe now, and I don't know where that button goes, um, but um, I saw on Komodo.com you can subscribe for sure. Uh, also, we hire people, um, as is, a, a, as is our, our, our lot in life. We're an IT company, and therefore we have a, a lot of positions open. So if you actually, hey, if you like Komunda and you are, uh, especially if you're somebody who's at this uh, webinar, you already use Komunda a bit, and you're thinking, hey, I could, I'd like to get involved in that company. This seems pretty cool. Niall's great. Nayla seems okay too. Uh, <laughs> why, why, <laughs> why would I want to work with them? So yeah, we we have a, we our consultancy team is always growing, and so is uh, Devrel and a bunch of others. So you can have a little scan there. Go to commandocon.careers. Um, yeah, cool. Uh, Nayla, any final uh, words of encouragement for us before we say goodbye? I just like the question corner, so I'm looking forward to the next one. Ditto. So thank you very much for showing up, folks. Thanks for listening to us answer questions. And thank you for the questions. Of course, this whole event would never happen if people didn't have questions. So one day we'll just delete all the documentation and make sure this event is the only way that anyone can find out what's going on with Kalinda. I think that's a very safe way to keep this uh, event alive. In the meantime, I hope to see you all next week. Uh, thanks, Nayla. Thanks, uh, Christy. And of course, Kaya in the back background who are doing all sorts of fancy things. And uh, thanks, everybody who showed up. See you next time. Cheerio. Bye.